All right, so divisibility and prime factorization, we're going to start by looking at the divisibility stuff. Basically, what it's trying to say is, is something divisible by a number? So like any number that's even, you could divide it by two, two right? Two. So, um, so that's kind of what we're looking at. So I'm going to start out with, I guess you could do the Roman numerals, divisibility. So divisibility, and I'm going to say in red for dramatic emphasis, a number is divisible, is divisible by another number if, um, I'm going to write it this way, I'm going to make it into a fraction and say on the top you have the number. And then on the denominator, the second number. So a number is divisible by a second number, by another number, if the number divided by that second number leaves no remainder. So it leaves no remainder. And what, what we'll probably do is, I'll do a couple examples and I'll kind of come back and look at that fraction thing again. But, so for an example, you could say like 6 divided by 1 or 6 over 1 equals 6, right? Starting with an easier one, but there's no remainder, there's no decimal point answer. So that one, 6 is divisible by 1. If we were to do 6 divided by 2 or 6 over 2, that equals 3. So 6 is divisible by 2. Is 6 divisible by 3? Yes. Yep, because that equals 2. But now once we get down to 6 divided by 4, can anybody do that in their head? 1.4. Plus 1.5, 1.5. Um, so 1.5. So it's not divisible by 4. So I'm going to cross that one out. 6 isn't divisible by 4. It is divisible by 1, 2, and 3. And we could go on and say 6 divisible by 5. You know, is 6. So 6 divided by 5 or 6 over 5 is 1.2. Nice. So, so 6 isn't divisible by 5 either. We have that remainder of 2. <laughs> or we have a calculator in the house. So 6 divided by 6. Please don't need your calculator for that one, though. 1. one. Okay, so 6 is divisible by 6, right? So we're finding that 6 is divisible by 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now, ooh, 6 divided by 0 gives you... Six. Um, an error. It's kind of like if you have a pizza, or if you have six pizzas, could you cut them into zero pieces? Yeah. Yes. Not really. But that's still just one, though, not the zero. Then so, so nothing's divisible. You eat it, then you okay. Moving on. Okay. So, what I want to say is this here: that. A factor, we're going to talk, you notice that the, in the title we had like prime factorization. Just want to throw out what a factor is right now uh, and say like factors. Um, it's the number something is divisible by. So the numbers something is divisible by. with no remainder. So, so a factor, the number something's divisible by with no remainder. So in other words then, for 6, these are going to be the factors. So the factors for 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. So factors for 6 are going to be 1, 2, Three and six. Does that make sense? All right. This this next part is the part that I struggle with because it's really just kind of memorization for some of it. And if you can logically make sense of it, I think that'll help you remember it. That's what I try to do. But the book gives you all these divisibility rules. Honestly, I didn't remember some of them, but they're nice tricks to have, um, kind of in your arsenal of math tools. Um, so divisibility rules. So divisibility rules. 
basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to say a number is going to be divisible by 2 if this is true. A number is divisible by 3 if this is true. And 4 if this is true. Um, so let me come up with them. So I'll say a number is divisible by colon. And now I'm just going to start like a new line for all of these. So I'm going to start out with 2. Uh, you could divide a number by 2 if it's what kind of number. This one I think you got a good shot at. Even. If it's even. So a number is divisible by 2 if it's even. Good? Make sense? So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, all those numbers, uh, 38, you know, they're all divisible by 2 because they're even. Good? For the 2, most of you probably know the 2. The 3 is one that I have memorized before this, and it comes in handy. Something's divisible by 3 if the sum of the numbers... Sum means we're doing what to the numbers? Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Adding. adding. So if you take and add up all the digits, the sum of its digits... So the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. So it's divided by 3. Um, so, for example, so, uh, backing up. So it's divisible by 3 if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. So if you pick a number like uh, 204, 2 plus 0 plus 4 is 6. Can you divide 6 by 3? Yes. yes. So 204 then is going to be divisible by 3. Uh, where if you, so, so if you do 204 divided by 3, you'll come up with something evenly. It's going to be 66, I think. 68, thank you. Um, 68. Um, it works out nicely. If instead you had, uh, so 4, 1, 8, I need to add another digit still. So we have 5 plus 8 is 13, um, so maybe another 1. So if you add all those numbers up, you have 14, right? Is 14 divisible by 3? No. Evenly? Nope. So it's not a multiple of 3. So this one here then is not going to be divisible by 3. Um, you'd get a decimal, either a 0 0.3 repeating or a 0 0.6 repeating if you did the math. We okay on the 3? All right, so now 4. A number is divisible by 4 if the number in the last two digits is divisible by 4. If the last two-digit number is divisible by 4. So in other words, if we had something like 128, divisible by 4? Yes. Because 28 is divisible by 4. 28 divided by 4 is 7. And for that matter, if we had like 428, is that still going to be divisible by 4? Yep, because you're just looking at the 28, right? Cool. All right, so now 5. What can you tell me? This one I think you can think of. What numbers are going to be divisible by 5? 5 and 0. They have to... End in a 0. Perfect. They have to end in a 0 or a 5. Because if you do multiples of 5, you have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So all those numbers end in a 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 or a 5, 5, 15, 25. So divisible by 5 if they end in 5 or 0. Or if the last digit is a 5 or a 0. Still good? So 6. Numbers divisible by 6 if the number is even. And divisible by 3. We're not going to do all of them. We skipped 7. Um, so because if it's even, it's divisible by 2. If it's divisible by 3, that's where we added all the numbers up. And is that number divisible by 3, right? And that works because 2 times 3 is 6. There's no good rule for 7. So for 7, we just kind of, yeah... Grab your calculator, try it. Um, eight. Um, it's going to be divisible by eight if the last three digits are divisible by eight. So if the last three digits are 
are divisible by 8. And that, I'm not sure how practical that rule is going to be for us. Um, two more and then we're done. 9, something's divisible by 9. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. So for that, you could go back up to like that um, example we did for 3. If we had um, 6, 5, 7. So 657, if we add those three numbers together, we get 6 plus 5 is 11, plus 7 is 18. 18 divisible by 9? Yes. Yep. So then you know 657 is divisible by 9. One more, then we'll be done with this section. So it's divisible by 10 if it, anyone? It ends in a zero. Perfect. Ends with a zero. Nice that I have a whole bunch of people that are like thinking. So, so now we're recording. I want to do a couple examples. So if we have 4,320, I would. Um, we want to try to figure out, is it divisible by 2? Yes, no, and why? Yes, because... But to see something divisible by 2, the number just has to be even. 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 Yep, so it is divisible by 2. Um, is it going to be divisible by 3? No. Well, to figure out 3, we add all the numbers up, and that no. gives us 9. 4 plus 3 plus 2 is 9. Yes. 9 is divisible by 3? Yes. 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 Is it going to be divisible by 4? Four was if the last two digits were divisible by four. So this one here? Yeah. Yep. Because you could do 20 divided by four gives you five, right? Okay. Six. Ooh, six was the one divisible by two and divisible by three. You can talk. That's all good. So yes, right? Because it's even. And we already added them up and got a nine. So it's divisible by three. Still good. Okay. Eight. Eight was if the last three digits are divisible by eight. Whoa, look at it. <laughs> are the last three digits divisible by eight? Whoa. Yes. Often those are tough, but how can you how can you know yes for a three hundred twenty? Thirteen. Yeah. Oh, you did thirty-two. Yeah, do you see the thirty-two? Shh. More the snowing people though. It's thirty-two. Yes. A can go into 32. So 8 was if the last three digits are divisible by 8. So because you have the 32 in those last three digits, then you know it's going to be divisible by 8. So, so 8 was a yes. And then we have 9. 9 was add them up, is it divisible by 9? So 4 plus 3 plus 2 is 9. 9 over 9 is? Yep. So it's divisible by 9. The last one would be 10. Yes. Ten because it ends in a zero. So that one there, it's all of them. Uh, let's pick one that is not going to be all of them. You didn't put five and seven, five seven in there. Seven. Yeah. You realized that, right? Oh, I missed five, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. We don't have a good rule for seven, so we oh, skip no, seven. Right. And I missed the five. Is that divisible by five? Yes. Yep. Uh, because it ends in a zero. So it's going to be the 845. So divisible by two, yes or no? No. Because... Yep, ends in an odd. It's an odd number. So now 3. Divisible by 3, we need to add them and divide by 3. No. So we have 12 no. plus 5, 17. No. Nope, 17 is not divisible by 3. So it's not the 3. 4. No. No, because the number is... Uneven? Yep, it's, it's an odd number, so it won't work to divide it by long then. So this time we won't forget the 5. The 5, is it divisible by 5? Yeah. Because... Because it ends in a 5. So now 6. No. no. Nope. You could either apply the rule. Um, well, I guess the rule includes it, but it's an odd number. An odd number is never going to be divisible by an even, right? So as soon as you get an odd, you can say, all right, it can't be 2, 4, 6, or 8, or 10. Um, 7 we didn't have a rule for. Could it be 8? No. Nope. 
because you could say the last three digits divisible by 8, but again, it's odd, so it can't be divisible by an even. Let me quick finish this off. Um, if, we, if we add these together, shh, if we add them together, we get 17. Is 17 divisible by 9? No. Nope, so not 9. And how about 10? No. Yeah. The 5 rule was a 5 or a 0, so that's what you're thinking. But for 10, it has to end in a 0, so not 10. The next part then, I think I did Roman numerals, didn't I? I want to say I added those to my notes later. So we'll call this Roman numeral 3, and we'll call it prime numbers. So prime numbers. And then the last part of the notes is going to be looking at how can we take and break something up into prime numbers. But a prime number is going to be something that's only divisible by itself and 1. So prime number, it's only divisible by itself and 1. So when you start with the small numbers, the small numbers, there's, there's a lot of prime numbers. But as you start getting bigger, uh, they're more spaced out. So in other words, 2. Do you agree 2, you can only divide it by itself and by 1? The first couple are kind of lame. Then we'll get to the ones that are kind of fun to try to think about. Uh, 3. You can't divide 3 by 2, right? So you can divide it by 3, you can divide it by 1, so we're good there. Now how about 4? Is 4 a prime number? No, because you could divide it by 2. Divided by 2 evenly. So what's my next prime number going to be? Uh, five. 5. Because 5, you can only divide by 5 and by 1, right? It's not even, can't divide it by 2 or 4, can't divide it by 3. Next number, 7. It's not going to be 6 because 6 is divisible by 3 or by 2. So you just need one other one. So 7 is, can't divide 7 by anything nicely. How about 8? Nope. Nine. So, nine's not a prime number because you can divide by three. How about ten? Yeah. No. No, because it's even. Could divide it by two. Eleven. Yes. So eleven will be a prime number. Uh, till people get sick of thinking about it. After eleven, what do you think? Thirteen. Thirteen. Skip 12, because 12 is even, so you divide it by 2, so 13. Skip 14. I'm hearing some say 15, some not. 17 is the next one. 15 is divisible by 5. Um, so 17, that doesn't work out nicely. 18 is even. What about 19? Yes? Yep. 19 would be prime. Okay. Yep, 21 couldn't be. So 23, should we quit? No. Wait, no, we have to get to 30. To get to 30? Okay. 23, okay, so 23, not 24, 25? No. 26? No. 27? Yeah. 27 is by 9. 3 times 9 is 27. So not 28, 29, what do you think of 29? So 29 would be another one. And now we got to 30. So. Thirty-one would actually be your next one. So, um, Okay, so we should move on. You're welcome to spend the rest of class ignoring me and working on this, though. Okay, so prime numbers are going to be one option. Another option, maybe I'll call it Roman numeral 4. It's not hard to add a 4 in there. Are going to be composite numbers. So composite numbers? No. Kind of killed my M there. but. So prime numbers. Prime numbers, no, loving words. Uh, prime numbers are going to be numbers that are only divisible by itself in one. Composite numbers, like if you buy a composite frame bicycle, it's a frame that's made of a couple different kinds of metals. So you have like the lightness and rigidity of aluminum in certain parts, but then you have the, the flexibility, the shock absorption of carbon in others. So that's like a composite frame. A composite number is going to be where you have, um, like a, it's made up of prime numbers essentially. So it's a whole numbers uh, with more than three factors is the official definition. So it's a whole number 
by whole number, I'm just going to throw in there no decimals. Um, with more than three factors. I should just make the comment, my whole number definition there isn't very adequate. Um, whole numbers are going to be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the no decimals is true, but we also can't have a negative in there. Um, so with that, I'm going to say an example would be, let me slide up a little, an example of a composite number is going to be 12. Because what's three different ways I could get 12? I could do 12 as 1 times 4, 1 times 12, 3 times 4, and 6 times 2. So we have three different ways to get 12. Um, so if you have three or more ways, then 12 has to be a composite. So 12 is composite. You could do 20 would be another one, because 20 could do 1 and 20, or 4 and 5, 10 and 2, um, things like that. For me, I like going in order. Um, so I probably would have done like the 1 times 12, and then 2 times 6, and then 3 times 4. That helps me stay organized, but you can kind of do how you want with that. Like where 7, on the other hand, 7, the only way you can get 7 is what times what? Yep, 7 times 1 or 1 times 7. So 7 is going to be a prime number because you only can get it. There's only like the, the two factors. So here we have two factors. And where instead when we look at this 12, it's not that we have three combinations to get us to 12. It's that we have, like right here, we have a total of six factors that there's six different numbers uh, that go into 12. Um, we're up to the very last thing. You guys feel like you're okay up to this point? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, because it's a, it's a loaded, it's definitely a loaded lesson. All right, so our last one, Roman numeral 5, um, is a factor tree. Oh, have you guys done these before? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're going to love it this time. Because um, this was the thing I was looking at, kind of like, ooh, this is going to be tough. But if you've already seen it, for me, my experience is first time I see something that's tough, um, it's hard. But then when it gets reintroduced again, it's a little bit easier the second time. Maybe I don't totally master it. Third time, you know, it's, it's easier still. So you'll probably have better luck with it this time than you did before. Okay, so the point of a factor tree is it breaks a composite number. So it breaks a composite number, a number with three or more factors, into prime numbers. Wait, can we relearn it? I don't know. Yep. Yeah. My plan was to teach it. I didn't know that you guys had already seen it before. The official like term for it is prime factorization. So I'm going to put that in quotes here. So prime factorization. Once you get kind of that, the, the swing of it, I think they're kind of fun. Granted, I really like math. Um, but I'd say go into it, especially if you don't remember it at all, then don't take other people's word for it that you're going to hate it. If you hated it before, it's like you know more math now than you did before. We just did all those divisibility rules. Even if you don't have them all memorized, that's going to help make this easier. Yes, sir? Yeah, go for it. Um, so first example then is going to be 154. Um, Dividing that by 1 does us no good, right? Because it doesn't really break it down any. So we're going to say it's even. We're going to divide it by 2. two. Mm -hmm. Then does anybody see what my other number would be? 4. 2 times what gives me 154? That's really what I'm asking. 77. 77. Yeah, should, should, yeah. We should make him put his calculator down. All right, no more calculators. We're going to do this the old-fashioned way. Uh, okay. But 2 times... 77 gives me 154. What I would probably try doing is this, if I'm trying to do that in my head. So I'd say, okay, 154. Well, I could divide that 15 by 2, right? Yeah. And it gives me like 7 and a half. So do you agree 7 goes into that nicely? And then I, I couldn't, so I got rid of like 14 of the 15. So I still have like 1 there and then my 4. Well, 14 divided by 2 is 7. 
it's kind of like you're doing long division in your head a little bit. Sometimes that'll work. If it doesn't work, then you could do a longer way. All right, 77. So we're looking at our prime numbers. Is 77 divisible by 2? No. Nope. 3. 7 plus 7 is 14, not divisible by 3. I won't be divisible by 4 because it's odd. 5, nope, doesn't end in 5. Seven. But 7, because 7 times what? Gives me 77. 11. Is 11 a prime number? Um, yes. Yep, so we can't break it up anymore. So for 154, we have 2 times 7 times 11. So the factors of 154 are going to be 2, 7, and 11. Good? Let's do another one. So another one is I have 63. I like... I try to divide by 2's as long as I can until the number becomes odd. Here we're already at odd. So 63 can't divide it by 2. When we divide it by 3, yes. we can because 6 plus 3 is 9. So what's my number going to be? 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we can take care of the 6, changing it to a 2. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we have 21. So 3 is one factor. 21, how can we break that up? 7 times 3. Yep. I'm going to put the small number first, so 3 and 7. So we have 3 times 3 times 7. Um, so 3 times 3 is the same as 3 times squared. Did you guys do it that way last time? So... If you look at those there, so basically it's the ends of the it's the ends of the little branches you could say. If you look at it like an upside down tree, it's the numbers at the end. And last one, so we have 630. 630. First thing we're going to divide it by is two. We could say six divided by two is three. Three you can't really divide by two, but 30 is 15. Good. So 315. Can we divide 315 by 2? No. no. Can we divide it by 3? Yes. Yep. So add them all up, you get a 9. So what's my number going to be? First digit will be 3 divided by 3 is 1. And then you can't divide 1 by 3, but 15 divided by 3 is 5. So I have a 05. I don't know if that helps or not, but you could do it long division-wise if you wanted to. Okay. 105, can we divide that by 2? Yeah. No. Because it's odd. Can we divide it by 3? Yeah. Because if we add them up, we get 1 plus 0 plus 5 is 6, so we could divide it by 3. That's going to be a little tougher. Um, I'd maybe... I'm trying to think of how can I make it make sense to you guys. Okay. This 10 isn't going to totally work, right? But kind of. If we divide 10 by 3, we get... Okay, 9 divided by 3 is 3, right? Do you agree that leaves me one of my 10 left? What? Maybe let's just do it the old-fashioned way. 105, 3. We could put a 3 up there, right? And have our 9. Carry down the 5. So... So 35 is the number. Almost done. Can I quick finish? Yeah. Okay. So we have three numbers so far. Two and three and three. 35 divisible by two? Yeah. Nope. No. Divisible by three? Five. Nope. No. Yeah, so some of you see the number is going to end up being a five. Five times what gives me 35? Seven. 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 So our final answers then are going to be our factors. Those. You can't do the times 6, though. Um, so we have 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 7. And how the book's going to write it, 3 times 3 is, is 9, but then you're not down to prime numbers. They write it as these two here is the same as 3 squared. So the book's answer is going to be 2 times 3 squared times 5 times 7.